big hit and he has not returned to the game. He appeared to be fine. Took a swig of water on the bench, but it has been a long touchdown drive by Guajardo that has the Bears on top 14 to 7. And you have to give credit to the defense, Javier. They, they stiffened up and made the yeah, corrections. That, that defense, the first quarter, West Lake Ohio produced 99 yards of offense all on the ground. The second quarter, West Lake was stifled to just 46 total yards. So it's been a tale of two quarters right now. The first quarter was dominated by West Lake, the second dominated by the Bears. But the only one that counts is the scoreboard. And right now we have the Bears leading at the half, 14 to 7. We're in for another exciting 24 minutes of football. The Bears trying to inch closer and closer to a playoff berth. West Lake trying to fight still for a share of a district title. So let's see, we got 24 minutes of exciting football, Alex, coming up. The Bears are set to receive on the second half. The kickoff is fielded at the 25 by Andrew De La Cerda. He's and a the whole stuff opens up on the left side. He's looking for block from Nathan Cifuentes, but he couldn't get past number 34, I believe, Oscar Villalon. And see, Nathan Cifuentes, it was actually Justin Rich. He couldn't get the block for his friend and Andrew De La Cerda. We've, we've said on the on the kickoff returns that they had that whole left side open and they just couldn't get the blocking necessary. Yeah, it looked like a lot of potential out there on the left side near the West Echo bench. He was hustling out there. He had one man to beat, couldn't beat him. He held him out. Uh, I'm not sure why the referee didn't blow, uh, you know, the his forward mo momentum was stopped, but the West Echo came in, gave him a couple of hard hits. He appeared to have fumbled the ball, but the uh, Bears recover it. Either, in either case, uh, they're going to start off once again in great field position at the at their own 41-yard line. Excuse me, at their own 46-yard line. Make that 47. The uh, referee keeps inching it closer to midfield. So the Bears' golden opportunities to start the second half. They're already up 14-7. It would be a bit detrimental uh, to Wesico if they give up a touchdown. The Bears trying to take advantage, full advantage of a quick start here in the second half. Detrimental for Westlake, and it'll be amazing for the Bears, who still have Guajardo in that quarterback. He faked the pitch with the handoff inside. We'll have to see where exactly Andrew Castaneda is. He's still tossing the football on the sideline. Yeah, the good news for the Bears, we do see Philip Patino in the backfield. So Patino hopefully just had his bell rung or his wind knocked out of him, but. Uh, He's back there. He's a, He's been a threat. He's big, picked up quite a few yards offensively. So let's see what happens here in the second half. The Bears pick up no yardage on that first carry to start the second half. And keep in mind, the Bears are without ele uh, are without 13 touchdowns. The product of Jules Navarro, who's out for the season. Of course, the Bears' senior starting quarterback. And they come out running with Philip Patino on that right end side. And he picked up maybe five on the play. Brings up third and five with 10.56. Yeah, nice reporter. bit of running there by Patino over the right end. He picked up 60 tough yards in the first uh, half, including a, what was a 22 yard touchdown scamper up the middle. So he's a workhorse, and you can tell right now he is running hard. He feels that he wants this game badly. The Bears are to have a third and five already in West Echo ter territory at the 48 yard line. And I'll keep this in mind that every single yardage in this game has been on the ground. Not a single passing yard thus far. Panthers blitz. They get to Guajardo, hit him in the backfield, but he's able to lunge forward. They're going to mark him at the 45-yard line, at the West Lico 45-yard line. It's going to bring up a fourth down and two. So it's going to be interesting to see just how much confidence Coach Maruquin has on this offensive line, and I wouldn't doubt if they come in with a jumbo package to pound for these next two yards. They've already put in Guajardo, the uh, senior nose tackle, and also Nick Mendoza to block in on that offensive line. And the uh, Bears were trying to get the Westlico front line to maybe... A little push punt. It's a push punt by Guajardo. Uh, rolls beautiful. inside the 10. Justin wow. Richie just watches it outside the four. And that is a tip to the hat on Javier Martinez's behalf. That, that, that is a great executed pooch punt. They went up to the line of scrimmage, probably forcing Coach Villarreal to say, whoa, wait a minute, they're going to go for it on fourth and two and call a timeout. They don't go for the bait. Instead, they drop back, do a little pooch punt. Works out to perfection. They're going to pin Westlaco at the five-yard line. This was the same position where the Miami defense 
sacked Andy Dalton last mm -hmm. night on Thursday Night Football for a safety. Let's see if the Bears can do the same here. It's in handoff inside to Osiel Gonzalez. They'll carry it outside of the shadow of their own end zone all the way to the 10. And we still have not seen Aaron, their Brown, leading Brown, rusher, uh, Eric, uh, Eric Gonzalez. Eric Gonz yes, sir. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if they're saving him for later. Or maybe he's banged up from the game last week against Mackay. Uh, but as you noted earlier, they got a stable of running backs, and they're all good quality running backs. So whoever they runs the ball out there, I'm sure they're going to do an efficient job for them. Second and five for the Panthers. Nowhere to go there. The penetration made by Christian Sanchez of his linebacker position. That's the seventh different runner that the Panthers have had tonight. And still no Eric Gonzalez. Couldn't get a peep from the Westaco coaching staff. They would not budge about his information and status. We'll have to see if he's even dressed out tonight. That's a big third down here for the Bear defense. It's third and four at the Westlaco 11 yard line. Third and four for the Panthers. It's a toss to free and free got oh, stood up by wow. Bobby Wakando. Great job in open space at the seven. It's a loss of four. And Guajardo doing it all on offense, defense. Great job there by Guajardo. Lost his shoe and he may have to play with only one, one cleat. My goodness, he stood up that man. It was one on one action. You either win or you lose this battle. Guajardo up to the test. Perfect execution. That's the way you teach your youngsters how to tackle right there. Bobby Guajardo, great play, forcing Westlaco into a fourth and seven and a definite punting situation at their own eight yard line. The Bears should end up with the ball inside Westlaco territory. The Panthers are forced to punt. Matthew Lopez sets up from his own end zone, gets a high booming kick, Very and nice Nathan Sinfuentes lets it bounce. He had to field it at the 46. I don't know if he touched it. Someone please fall on it. That would have. I believe he touched it. Oh my goodness, and he ruled that he touched it. They're saying no, but. Wow, that was a major mistake there by a young man. Luckily, there was no instant replay in high school because I want to say he put a, a hand on it, and if he did, it would definitely be Westlake was ball, but... You see their coach, wow. Tony Villarreal, and the entire coaching staff I, signaling for Westlake ball. I actually saw it from up here. I, I thought that the, the Nathan Cifuentes touched it. It might have brushed his leg or something, but that hop was very dangerous. It kind of just snuck in there mm -hmm. at the 30. So that was a very, very dangerous bullet the Bears just dodged. And they've been playing mistake-free football. They had one turnover, but they forced two from Westlaco. And now we'll see the Bears on their second drive of offense. The pass complete to Nathan Cifuentes. It's caught. Yeah, that was uh, Justin Ritchie. Justin Ritchie, catch. Justin Ritchie, excuse me, number 10, the fullback, I mean, the, the tight end. Yeah. So Justin Ritchie sneaking off. They have to spread the ball out. They'll have Taylor Santillan, Mike Montemayor, as well as Ifuentes and uh, Justin Ritchie lined up. Normally trips right to the near side. And yeah, another wrinkle there by uh, Coach Maruquin, leaving it all out on the field, throwing, using all the decks cards in his hand right now and he's just trying to muster up some offense. Castaneda toss now with Steve Fuentes. He Fuentes oh, makes he a tackle, tackle and he's up to the race with the 50, the 45, the 40. He's got a man chasing him down the sideline. It's a fun race and the Bears score a touchdown with 640 in the third quarter. They take a 20 to 7 lead. There are no flags on the play. Touchdown Bears. 65 yard touchdown pass to Fuentes. Bears touchdown. Easy money. Easy money baby. There are no flags on the play. It is wow. good. And Nathan Cifuentes breaks loose for a long touchdown reception. And more importantly, Castañeda gets some confidence going after he was replaced by Bobby Guajardo momentarily. Touchdown Bears. They lead at 20 to 7, pending the extra point. From Rios, the extra point is up, and it's good with 639 in the third quarter. Bears lead at 21 to 7. Over the Westaco Panthers, my goodness, you're watching Friday Night Football on KTRI TV 17. Woo!
Welcome back. Bears lead at 21-7 over Westlake, Ohio after that 60-yard touchdown catch from Andrew Castañeda to Nathan C. Fuentes. 6.39 left, third quarter. And now Westlake comes out returning the football with Anthony Gracia. Gracia with a nice bit of running there. Returns a good quick hustle. Gets it to the 42-yard line. Uh, it's interesting. The Bears elect not to kick it off deep. They're doing kind of a squib kick, getting up to the midfielder. But uh, the Bear defense on their first time, the West Coast had the ball, forced them into a three and out. Their offense with a huge, huge play. Might be the game, the play of the season for the Bears. 65-yard touchdown as they're up 21-7 with 6.30 remaining in the third quarter. Flags fly in as the West Coast Panthers try to run it. They haven't established this. As we see the indication here from Andy Scott, the official for tonight's game. They haven't been able to establish that running game after that first quarter. Yeah, the Bears, uh, after the first quarter, did a great amount of adjusting. Uh, they really stifened this offense. It's, and really, West Coast, the third-ranked offense, a great running team. They have not been able to put any, any drive together since that last touchdown. They scored on their second possession. After that, it's been a fumble, an interception, and now a punt. Paul Rodriguez going long for Andrew Aldape. In and out of the hands of the senior wide receiver into double coverage. Alalpe with a great effort there. Almost came up with a circus-like catch. Incomplete though, brings up a long second and 15 for Wesica. Well, you gotta remember though, Alex, uh, early, midway through the second quarter on a play where the quarterback dropped back, he stumbled and his knee touched. If his knee doesn't touch, it's a touchdown pass for Wesica. Ever since then, they, 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 they've dropped off so far. It was a touchdown. Andrew Cavazos, he rolled, he kind of faked it to the left-hand side, went around to the right, his knee was down, and that would have made it 14-7, Westlaco over the Bears, but right now, PSJ with three unanswered three un un touchdowns. And, uh, you, know, you know, I keep saying this, Richard Sanchez has got to be the best middle linebacker in, in the state. Well, right, he's played, <laughs> and you know what, he's got my vote tonight. Once again, my goodness, he reads that, like he has a playbook in his back pocket. That is a huge, huge loss. Another 10-yard loss. Christian Sanchez reads it, gets through the defense untouched. Great tackle for a huge loss. That's about the third or fourth play he's had for a loss. Tackle for loss. Great job. Christian Sanchez brings up a huge third and 25 for Westlaco. Gets you the fair defense and come through once again. And force a turnover or a punt. That's his second sack tonight. And now Rodriguez airing it out. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage, throwing it in the vicinity of Chris Menchu making the coverage. And again, looking for Andrew Cavazos. And Paul Rodriguez just couldn't make the pass. And it brings a fourth and 21. And from what I was told, he's not even their starting quarterback. I went over to the other press box and I was told I can't remember the gentleman's name. I'll ask uh, my buddy right now, but he is not their starting quarterback. And here we see on the replay, the quarterback drops back, makes a long throw. Machu playing center field out there. That's the ball down, kind of went for the interception. Was well, up to the task and uh, forcing a fourth down now. It's fourth and 21 for the Panthers at their own 30-yard line. The Bears are up 21-7 with 533 remaining in the third quarter. The punt away by Matthew Lopez, kicking it to Nathan Fuentes who lets it roll out. 525, third quarter. Westlaco trailing the PSJ Bears 21-7 here on Friday Night Football. KTRIT 17, Alex Spenia, along with Javier Martinez, Paul Orly, Garcia Jr. bailed out on us on the broadcast. If you're listening, Orly, tisk, 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 shame, shame, shame on you. Bears Mexico, he was, he was actually there are bad luck charm. Every time he was up here, we had a school lose. Right now the Bears <laughs> have been playing outstanding football on all three phases. You know what? This is we've seen the Bears numerous times this year, and this is by far the best 
game, both offensively and defensively. Maybe they're starting to gel and peak at the right time, right before the playoffs. And now Guajardo breaking into the second level. Op tackling is optional for Westlaco. Yeah, great play action fake there. Actually, Guajardo keeps it. Everybody seems to think that Patino took the ball around the right end. But Guajardo keeps churning and churning. Picks up a, a very tough physical 14 yards for a first down. And the Bears just keep moving those chains. Okay, more importantly, they keep killing the clock. So right now we're at five minutes left to go in the third quarter. The Bears are up by 14. First and 10 for the Bears from their own 36. Patino gets it again. Turns the corner across midfield. He gets a lot of room to run. He's been getting good blocking on that left side by Andres Martinez and Jaime Cadena, both very busy guys. Martinez 6'3", 270, and Cadena 5'10", 265. Uh, Patino electrifies the crowd there by getting about 19 yards on that one. Tight rope around the left uh, sideline right in front of the West Echo bench. Almost stayed in bounds. If he would have stayed in bounds, that would have been a touchdown. But nonetheless, it's another bare first down. Now they're once again inside West Echo territory at the 45-yard line. First and 10. Bears have 231 yards rushing after a 20-yard pickup by Patino. They'll give it again to Patino on that sweet chase by the Bears. He's chased by the Panthers. He lowers his head. And Andrew Cavazos took the front of Patino. He was actually playing with a dislocated shoulder a couple of weeks ago. Yes, sir. He's a tough gentleman. I tell you what, that's how bad he wants to win. I know last year left not only him, but the whole senior club with a very sour taste in their mouth. So this year they can taste it. They're five and three. They have a golden opportunity. They're three and three in district. They punch a ticket to the state playoffs, but they still got four minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the third quarter and another fourth quarter. And then they have still next week to win against McCallum Memorial. Still, still a long way to go, but they're looking very good right now. Seven and 11 for the Bears in that pistol formation. High snap for Bobby Guajardo. He gets good blocking across the 40. Still at his feet and finally brought down by a gang of Panthers defenders. Yeah, very good running by Bobby Guajardo. And, you know, all year long, the Bears have been using him as a as a safety, as a cornerback. And, but tonight, with the injuries mounting up for the Bears, they're plugging him in at quarterback. Never even knew he was a quarterback. Much less a very good quarterback. He gains quite a bit of yards on that play. Brings up a third and three at the 38-yard line. And once again, Cadena, Martinez, and Tamez doing an excellent job on the left side of that offensive line. More importantly, they're keeping that Panther defense on its heels. We saw a couple of them right now with their hands on their knees, up and puffing for air. Third and three from the Westaco 38. Up the middle again is Guajardo. Gets the first down and even got a little bit of forward momentum from number 72, Rene Perez. So he dove in essentially for three or four more yards and the Bears move the chains. Yeah, Valve Guajardo once again, tough, tough running up the middle. And you just mentioned it, Alec, that's the most important thing. That's another fair first down. And that's going to chew up some more clock. And right now they're at the West Echo 32 yard line. So they're up 21 7. Their defense is playing lights out right now. One more score, and that just may seal the deal. First and 10. Bears from the West Echo 32. Clock down to one. And they're going to get the layup game here. Oh, that's, that, that's horrible right there. You know, you got everything going on your side, everything positive. And then we got a delay of game that, you know, it shouldn't happen. Not, not on a ground-oriented team, but it did happen. They lose five yards and see if they can regain some momentum. You don't, you don't want to give Westlake any type of life. I'm not sure if they call a timeout here as they... No, they marked it off five yards. It was they, a delay they, of game. Yeah, they marked five yards, but I'm not sure if they had called a timeout after that. Okay, now the clock no. is ticking down. No, they, to they just huddled up to make sure they're, they're, they're you know, not, no need to panic. Probably let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's just keep pounding the ball, clean up the clock, get in some big yardages in, and get a big W tonight. Castaneda now with a stable of running backs to Andrew Lacerda. He'll go nowhere, drop for a loss of three. Yeah, that, that play was a slow developing play. It never really took off, and the uh, end result is another loss of three yards. So. The Bears had it at the 32 there. Now they're going backwards. They're at the 40, so brings up a second and 18. 
De La Cerda has four carries for one yard. He hasn't been very successful on the ground. Of course, the both load of the carries have gone to Filipe Patino. Easily over 100 yards already. And now C, uh, C Fuente, excuse me, Castañeda came out tossing. He was looking for Mike Montemayor. Yeah, Mike Monte, Monte, Montemayor had a step on the defender, but the quarterback Mike clearly Montemayor threw behind him. Although the Panther three. defender clearly had a paw all over his left shoulder pad, but the referee, the linesman said, you know what, nothing happened. So it's an incomplete pass. Brings up a long third and 18 for the Bears. I think the key here is not to commit a turnover. You know what, uh, if you got to take your medicine, go ahead and punt the ball, but do not give them any cheap yards here. Throwing interception downfield and set him up inside the, the own red zone by Filipe Patino getting some good blocking near side across the 10. Skips the man, touchdown Filipe Patino. There are no flags on the play. Another 40 yard run by Patino for the score. And the Bears on third and 18 take it to the house. He did, 27 to seven. Third and 18, I thought the Bears were just gonna try to pick up a couple yards for their punter, but instead it's a 40 yard run for Patino. Easy money, touchdown Bears. Easy money Bears. 40 yards on the run. 126 total for Patino. Brandon Rios with the point after it's good. 218, third quarter. 28 unanswered points for the Bears make it 28-7 PSJA high over Westlaco. And the day after Halloween, the Bears come out possessed. 28 unanswered points against the Westlago Panthers, who presumably had the third best defense in District 31-5A. But the Bears right now, easy money with the top-ranked defense. And now a little bit of uh, difficulty getting the ball by Andrew. Oh, that big hit. Have, and he took a big hit by the kicker. Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios said, let me get some big hit by the big guy. Actually, Brandon Rios is a big size kid, so uh, not surprised that he puts a wall up on that ball carrier. He says, let me show you what the kicker can do. Westlingo prepping up for yet another drive. They haven't scored in the first quarter. Their only touchdown of the game. Yeah, their touchdown came in their second possession. After that, it's been fumble, interception, and then two punts. On a good play for the Panthers. Major free with a six yard pickup on that play. And their leading rusher, Eric Gonzalez, he's not even dressed up for tonight. Usually, you have an injured player who has their jersey up on the sideline, but Eric Gonzalez not even dressed out for tonight's game. And the Panthers desperately missing him oh, oh and another great play you know what i'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to say who it is but you know who that man is number 22 he's got my book raw state linebacker right now christian sanchez what is that his fourth tackle for a loss my goodness he's playing like a madman make a fat head of christian sanchez i will put it on my room right now and have him sign it wow <laughs> that boy is good Christian Sanchez. But you know what? I, you got to give credit to that defensive line, though. You know, bull, jumbo there. They're clogging up the middle, giving them the lane. So, you know, hats off to that entire front four. Bears with two down linemen. Paul Rodriguez 
run the shotgun. He'll look to pass, completes it near side. Brandon Guerra. Number 20 with that. Brian and Guerra. Christian Sanchez yeah, right. doing the cleanup duties right there on the near side bench. Yeah, that's a, what kind of game Christian Sanchez is having. He actually missed the ball carrier as he ran out of bounds. And I think I want to say he he added another tackle on the sideline. He tackled his own man. He's just a tackling machine tonight. With 54.5 seconds left, that's Westlake's first first down of the second half. That shows you the kind of drop that the Panthers have had offensively after that first quarter. And here they line up on first and 10 inside Bears territory at the 44. Rodriguez says to pass, looking for Anthony Gracia. And he didn't even get the pass off. Another big sack for the Bears. Leading the charge was Tomas Quiroz, big number 99. Great push up front by Tomas Quiroz. But just as importantly, the, the secondary man gave the quarterback no options to pass. And here we see the play once again unfold. Big hit, big sack. It's second and 16 with 23 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And also give a little bit of love to Nick Mendoza. Seven set drop. It's a running play for Brandon Brian Guerra. Taylor Santillan gives him the uh, whirl. He takes out his legs. Flies like a helicopter for a yard or two more. He'll be short of the first down, and that should probably end the third quarter dominated by the PSJ High Bears. That sets up a third and one. We come back to start the fourth quarter. 28-7 Bears over the Panthers. Westlake on third and one with their power package. Hand off, they get the first down, but a flag flies in. Let's see if this run by Aaron Sanchez holds up. The flag was thrown very early, so either the defense was offsides or it was a false start on the offense. Against the Bears. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were offsides. The Bears were offsides, so big, big run to start off the, to open the fourth quarter for Westlake. It puts them at the Bears 16 yard line. So Westlake Finds themselves down 20 to 7 early here in the fourth quarter, but they're in striking distance right now. This game could get very interesting if the Westlake proceeds to score a touchdown here. Westlake looking for their first point since 436 mark of the first quarter when they scored on a three yard run by Andrew Cavazos. And now Paul Rodriguez gets absorbed by Nick Mendoza and also Tomas Quiroz. And Christian Sanchez, a Again, trio of your boy. tacklers right there. A three-headed monster with a huge, huge quarterback sack. Two and nine, second and 19 at the 25. Wow, just when you thought Wessico had something going. Boom, bam, sack. Pua, a nine-yard loss, and we haven't heard the Jumbo Wajardo's name. You see there, he's getting double teamed. And, and I think that is what's clearing up. Uh, Sanchez. You know, Sanchez, you, you may say Wajardo may be the, the best member on that defensive line, but you got another animal in the, in the middle linebacker spot in Christian Sanchez to deal with. Bears rotating their interior lineman. Rodriguez with a quick toss into the flats to Guerra. There Guerra breaks through. Touchdown, Westlaco. A 25-yard touchdown pass from Paul Rodriguez to Brian Guerra on that one. Tackling was optional for the Bears. Guerra just took through and scored the second touchdown of Westlaco, which makes it 28-13 with 10.45 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was simply a nice little flanker pass. He saw an open great downfield blocking by the Westlaco receivers and sprang them open pretty much untouched. And once again, it's 28-13, so Westlaco inches closer. Let's see this extra point pending. 
It's, it's blocked. It's blocked by and the kick by Andrew Palomares. And the Bears got blocked. it, and they're off to the races. Or they appear to be. <laughs> a little excited there. When number 50 is running with the ball, anytime you see a guy with a five in front of a, any number, he's not going to get very far. Any player with a five or a, and, or uh, a nine. Yeah, yeah. Cesar says, says Leo, you know, my hat's off to you, buddy. Great park, great hustle, but hey, stay at your middle linebacker position. Hey, when I played defensive lineman in my days, I was excited just hitting the quarterback in the backfield. Imagine blocking the punt and yeah. returning it for a, a two-point conversion. You know what? But more importantly, all kidding aside, that puts the game at 28-13. So if the pa Panthers do want to make a comeback, they're going to have to involve a two-point conversion. So huge block there by the Bears special teams unit. It is 28-13 Bears over the Panthers after that 20-yard touchdown pass from Paul Rodriguez to Brian Guerra. Huh. And that blocked extra point makes it a more critical game. 15 point lead for the Bears. The way their offense has been playing after that first quarter where they only recorded eight yards of total offense. I wouldn't be surprised if Westaco tries an onside kick here or a little pooch kick. The, the Bears need to line up on that 50. Yeah, they're, they're up. I think they're expecting that now. The the critical thing is here, they pooch punt, pooch kick it to the 30-yard line. Now they're gonna. it's going to be a match scramble for that ball, and that's exactly what happens. They send it off. But see, Fuentes was there to corral it and Number quickly 12, kneels down, and the Bears will take over at about their own 27-yard line. And down it at the 26-yard line. First down 10 for the Bears. Before the Bears can line up on offense again, the entire team offensively rallies around coach Marroquin. And right now, the Bears are putting a lot of pressure on Westlake defense quite simply because you got Bobby Wajardo at quarterback doing a lot of quarterback keeps, getting a lot of yards. You can hand the ball off to Philip Patino who has over 100 yards rushing. And now we just saw a great touchdown pass as well. So the Bears flexing their muscles offensively. Patino with 126 yards rushing, and he'll add a couple more. Oh, no, he fumbles it. And Westaco appears to have it. No, okay, never mind. Westaco singly they have it. They, it, they were singly they had it, but Bobby Wajardo somehow comes up with the ball. Oof. That would have made this game very, very interesting. That's the kind of stuff that makes you hold your breath if you're a, a <laughs> Bears fan. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to give... Add any more life to Westaco. Westaco's pumped up right now. They just finished scoring a touchdown. The Bears have got to weather the storm. There's 10 minutes to go in the game. They have a 15-point lead. Across the expressway in McAllen. The McAllen Memorial Mustangs lead at 27-21 over the Magpie Bulldogs. Extra point was blocked that game. 10-06 in the fourth quarter. That's their direct competition for the fourth playoff spot. And this time, the Westaco defense absorbs the ball carrier on that play. This time, Bobby Guacardo getting absolutely nothing. Yeah, I think you can start to sense that urgency on that Westaco defense, knowing the, the possessions are running out. There's only nine and a half minutes left to go in the game. If the Bears can continue this drive, they're going to turn a lot of that clock away. They can probably milk it to about six, seven minutes. Right now, the Westlake are desperate for a, for a stop or a turnover. The Bears got to continue playing mistake-free football and hold on to this 15-point lead. Third and 12 for the Bears. Castaneda takes it himself. Got to protect the football there as he takes that it over to the 28. They'll the get it two yards past the original line of scrimmage. And I believe Westlake might have taken a timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're calling a timeout for. Well, the, uh, the official made some kind of indication. Well, I, I think what they were doing is possibly timeout. the line Let's judge go. thought that the the marker was a the actually the first down where the first down started, not a first down. I don't, I'm not sure what happened here. Westlake go took a timeout. 28-13 left.
Fuentes lining up to punt this ball away to Matthew Lopez. Bears on fourth and nine from their own 28 after the Panthers took a timeout. They have two remaining, trailing by 15. Westlaco kind of got its act together after that horrible third and uh, second and third quarter here in the fourth. Got it to 28 13 after a 20 yard touchdown pass from quarterback Paul Rodriguez to their running back Brian Guerra. Right now, the official is trying to sort things out here. Okay, the play clock has started, so here we go. Resume action. See, Fuentes gets a high, booming kick. It won't even cross midfield. It even takes a Westlake bounce. So Paul Rodriguez, after tossing a 20-yard touchdown pass on the previous drive, will start off from his own, from the Bears' 48-yard line. The, the kick was fielded by C. Fuentes, actually. Yeah, whole phone calls right now. This is going to get very interesting if Westlake can mount another touchdown drive. They're going to start at the 47. They're... They got a lot of confidence right now. Their defense did the job. Of course, the three, and now they're coming off of a possession, a previous possession, a touchdown pass. So 8.58 left to go in the ball game. Westlake spreading it out now, but they run it on the draw. Gets a one-yard pickup for the ball carrier, one of their multiple runners. This time it was Brian Guerra. They've had Guerra run it, as well as Aaron Sanchez, Major Free, Osier Gonzalez, Andrew Hernandez, and also Matthew Lopez got a touch on it also. It's oh, a fumble, fumble on the snap, and Gonzalez has to eat it there at the 44. Wow, that's a huge miscue there by the Westlake offense. A simple snap to the quarterback, mishandled. It'll result in a quarterback sack, and now it's a third and 19. Eight, eight, 11 in the game left, third and 19 after that loss on the fumbled snap by Rodriguez. Rodriguez, the junior quarterback, but they have four wideouts, empty backfield, so Rodriguez will come out throwing on this play. Rodriguez rolling to his left. He's got a man deep, and it's nearly oh. intercepted. Chris Menchu, where were you, son? Chris Manchu read that play, almost baited the quarterback to throw to the open receiver, cut right in front of him. It looked like he was about to grab it and run back. He maybe got a little bit excited. The ball falls incomplete, though, but nonetheless, it brings up a fourth and 19 great pass defense there by Chris Manchu. Should have been an interception, though. You That's see, why he plays on defense, maybe. And you see here the replay rolling to his left, throwing across his body, and Manchu jumped up, cut the route, and think of this, they had four wideouts on the left-hand side. The, right the near side. side was completely open. Had he made the grab, he was free to run mm -hmm. 40, uh, 60 yards for the touchdown. But the incompletion makes it 4th and 19 for Westlaco, which will come out punting they do Matthew a Lopez. reverse fake, but, oh, wow. That I, is very interesting. I don't see any flags on the play. Let's no, see some, somebody must have called a timeout. Westlaco had set up for a fake Westlaco run. called the timeout. It would have caught the Bears completely I, off guard. Yeah, he had a lot of green to run with on the left side towards the Westlaco bench. Wow, they, they hiked it to the up man. Then they did a reverse before anybody knew a timeout had been called. So all for not. Westlaco just shooting itself in the foot on these plays. special commentary by Eddie Ramos, the assistant Bears coach. <laughs> As Javier Martinez might go take care of some business here on 4th and 19. The Panthers will come out punting off the foot of Matthew Lopez. This time there will be no return and there was no one in the backfield to return this when it rolls all the way to the 16-yard line. The Panthers down it at the 16 and PSJ takes over. There's enough 
school. Bears right now looking to eat up that clock. Westlico defensively has kind of gotten his act together after allowing 28 unanswered points. But right now, they've been shooting themselves in the foot defensively and offensively. And now they'll come out running the Bears do with Philip Patino with a two yard pickup on that play. Our pickup for Patino, who now has 129 yards rushing to make it 247 yards on the ground on the night for the Bears. Second and seven, 702 left. Westlake with only one timeout left, trailing. 28 to 13, Bears on offense with a reverse to Patino, trying to get a block from De La Cerda, and Patino breaks loose, he's on a first down, but there's a flag on the play, he takes it to the 41, and there's a down Westlaco player, and a second flag comes in, so Fila Patino breaking loose again, and we'll see what the call is from Mr. Andy Scott. holding call against the Bears that'll bring them back half the distance on second and actually 10 so on second and seven that 20 plus yard run by Patino gets negated from the holding call appeared to be on that right side it was either Ever Vigil or Abraham Noyola but the Bears right now second and 17 from their own 10 yard line Trying to keep their playoff hopes alive right now is between them, McCall Memorial, Nicky Rowe, and even PSJ Memorial could have a chance if a lot of combinations happen, but the low snap to Guajardo. Guajardo turns the corner this time. He won't get that much blocking and actually steps. He keeps in bounds. He stepped out of bounds, but the official said he landed inside the field of play. The clock keeps ticking, and I guess that's the only positive to take from this play that they Move the ball and the clock keeps turning. And now I believe Westlaco might have called a timeout. Because the clock did stop at 6.15. The initially, there's a flag on the 10. It appears to be against the Panthers. So that run by the Bears was aided with an offsides by Westlaco. It appears to be still third down. It should be second and 12, I believe. Second and 12, excuse me. Second at and 12. the 15-yard line. First and 10, actually. Have a, that, well, that first and 10, first and 5. No. Well, first and 5 on the scoreboard, the chain says second down. So it's second and 12. There you go. Patino comes out with a fake, but they oh, give it to Bobby Guajardo on some extracurricular activities. Oh, that's got to be a pen. That is a huge penalty on number 10 for West Virginia. Chris Marroquin. No association with Steve Marroquin. I, I don't think so. He shoves a receiver down clearly after the play. Frustration call. It should have been third and about nine or ten. Instead, it should be a first down for the Bears. Westlico shooting itself in the foot. Huge, huge mistake. There's some bonehead plays, but this is just downright stupid. You almost had him down. And Marroquin losing. His head on that play give the Bears a first down. That's their fourth personal foul play, and that's 15 yards yeah. times four, make it uh, 60. You know, the, the worst part is not, not necessarily the 15 yards that the Bears are gaining here, but it gives them an automatic first down, a fresh set of downs, which clearly means the Bears keep running the ball. They may dwindle the clock down to about three minutes. The 
And right now we're at 5.30 left to go in the ball game. The Bears are up 28-13, and they have the ball at their own 31-yard line. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line, excuse me. First and 10 for the Bears. Inside run, won't get much on that play. Westlaco trying to stiff up its interior line with another run by the Bears. This time Christian Sanchez getting the ball again. Sanchez had come into this game carrying the ball. Just 14 times for 41 yards. This long was a two yard run. Has one touchdown, but he already has his longest run of the night, an eight yarder. Westlaco. So there's uh, seven seconds left to go on the play clock. The Bears don't want another delay of game. They got to hurry to the line. And Coach Marroquin wow. calls a timeout, that, that, saving that's, five yards. Yeah, but more importantly, what happens though, you, you kill the clock. I mean, you, you're stopping the clock right now. You're, you're nursing a 15 point lead. You know, the clock keeps running. You, you're going to get it down to about three and a half minutes, a second and eight, and said, you're doing the favor to Westlaco and calling a timeout. That allows Coach Villarreal to save his one timeout for later in the ball game. So a big mistake there by the offensive unit. Let's see if they can overcome it. It's second and eight at their own 32-yard line. Mack High 27-21 in the fourth quarter. That score has not been updated on Twitter since uh, 21 minutes ago. If you want to get in on the conversation, you're watching the game online here at the stadium on KTRI, delayed radio, iPad, whatever the case may be. I want to send your thoughts, questions, concerns. I know we've got a couple of fans out here that have uh, given us their feedback. Uh, Taylor Santillan's father, Mr. Gongora, giving his uh, love and support to the Bears who have 322 yards of total passing, most of it on the ground. You want to get, on the, get in on the conversation? Tweet me at Alejandro Peña with the hashtag PSJAISD. Bears coming out of the timeout, which avoided a five-yard loss on a delay of game. Another, another, another flag. We've another seen flag. this quite often yeah, from I, Westlaco. I, I, no, actually, I think the Bears are going to be flagged for a false start here. I think one of the linemen tried to get an early jump on this block. Before the play, false start, 6 three, four. Yeah, that'll, that's exactly what's going to be. So right now, the Bears are are going backwards right now. They're, it's instead of it's going to be a second and 13. And once again, no clock has expired. We're still at 431 remaining in the ball game. The Bears continue to hold on with a 15-point lead. 35-28 Memorial over Mack High with 326 left in the fourth. And that will set up a monstrous showdown next week at McCallum Memorial Stadium between the Mustangs and the Bears. Basically want to take all in that fourth playoff spot. But next week on KTRI we'll have the Wolverines against the Mackay Bulldogs. Third time we have the Bulldogs on, uh, on the broadcast here. And then Friday night, PSJ Southwest closes out its season against Mission Veterans. They're trying to get their first win in uh, their first district win in school history and also possibly knock off the Patriots on out of their playoff hunt. And of course, we'll be bringing you updates also from the Mustangs and the Bears. Who's the other game tonight? Is it Westlake East and Rowe? No, Westlake East is playing PSJ Memorial. PSJ Memorial, there we go. Rowe won last night. Rowe won 27 to That's 13. Right. Seemed like a long time ago last night. Trying to get an update here from the Wolverines game against Westlake East. That'd be nice if uh, PSJ Memorial pulls out the upset over there in Westlake. Pile Patino oh, with a opening. good block. He gets a jersey tucked from behind. Picks up four on the play. Oh, that's another, another late wow. flag. Is it against Westlake? Yes, it should be on number 77. Jesus Anaya and possibly 46, Joe Alonso. Once again, they were going to hold the Bears to a third and six 
third and five. Instead, they hit Philip Patino. He was already down. He was laying flat on his belly. He was tackled, and then they, they dogpile him for a lack of words, and that should be another 15-yard penalty. And then they push him to the ground as well. Was it a cheap shot? Adrian Ramos says yes. Yeah, and Coach Maroquin is adamant right now, yelling at the referee, saying he would like an ejection here. And, you know, we don't need that right now. we got to play it between the, between the lines, First between down, whi Indiana. whistles. Uh, th this might do it right here. I think this 15-yard uh, penalty may be the nail in the coffin for West Lico. No more vampires are going to come out tonight, that's for sure, on the West Lico side. No more chupacabras. I've never seen one. Been looking for one for years. They're sneaky to find. They're, they, they only lurk at night, but if you stay up late at night with those night vision goggles, they're, <laughs> you still won't find one. <laughs> I know they found a Yeti in a, uh, <laughs> in a commercial the other day in somebody's kitchen, so anything is possible nowadays with was modern it, technology. Was it the Cheez-Its commercials? <laughs> I don't know what it was. We can't, I don't think we can advertise that here. A cheese cracker. Andrew de la Cerda on the <laughs> run. <laughs> so they give Vila uh, Patino a little bit of a break. Yeah, I would just sit Philip Patino down and, you know, get his shoulder pads off. Don't even give him a chance to get back in the game. Save him for next week. Yeah, that's going to be a major showdown in McAllen against McAllen Memorial. Of course, for those of you that have tuned in to see the Mustangs against the Wolverines and the Raiders, Trevor Spades, he's... Uh, he's electrifying, the, more to the say top, the least. One of the top offensive weapons in the state. Chris and Sanchez on the carry plows forward for a two-yard pickup. We got another flag. So the play's getting sloppy right now as we uh, begin to conclude this ball game. It's still in doubt, though. There's 321 left. The Bears up by two scores. Anything is possible. Nothing is assured, and it's kind of tricky because you do have a 15-point lead. Westlake with only one timeout. It's been getting kind of chippy as we'll let uh, Mr. Andy Scott here give the call. Okie dokie. So as I was saying, it's a 15 point lead. It's getting kind of chippy at the end. It is not really assured the win for the Bears. But at the same time, you can really pull your starters out and uh, save them yeah. for next week. And as you say that, there's a lot of people from the Westlake stands getting an early exit home. They want to make the most of their Friday night. Sanchez. Wow. With a powerful <laughs> hand up, he bounces off defenders. He just ran over Carlos, no, Chris Carmona. My goodness, Chris and Sanchez. Heavy hitter out there. It's the day after Halloween, but he dressed up as Pac-Man there and just bounced off defenders. Third, that. third and 16 now from their own 45. Clock ticking down. Westlaco still with one timeout left. Bears with two and a 15-point lead. The Bears had 28 unanswered points after Westlaco <laughs> took a 7-0 lead with 4.56 in the first quarter off a three-yard touchdown run from Andrew Cavazos. And then after that, it was all money bears all day. And now Westlaco no, the bears up, though. but the Bears take a timeout. Yeah, I think the, the time clock, uh, the play clock was about to expire once again. So instead of a penalty, they call a timeout with 2.15 remaining in the ball game. I'm trying to update the people here on the broadcast of the Occurrence is happening on the Memorial Macau game. But now the internet not quite cooperating. But man, what a statement game for the Bears coming in after last week. Before last week, they had a, a long district losing skid, lost to Mackay. And now the Bulldogs tied it at 35 with 31 seconds left in the fourth. Ricky Rodriguez coming through for the Bears on a touch on a short touchdown run. So the Mustangs. Wow. 31 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Bears tied. and the Mustangs tied at 35. And the Bulldogs can pull through. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. 
Third and 16, and Patino yeah. got a little jump on there. Yeah, everything's kind of out of sync right now on both sides. Uh, you know, we got a couple minutes left to go in the ball game. Maybe these, both these teams are conceding who's going to win tonight, and they just want to get back on the bus or, or head home and get ready for next week. But there's still, there's still 213 remaining in the ball game, and the Bears continue to go backwards. It's now third and 21 at their own 40-yard line. This drive has taken maybe three, three, four minutes, but in real time, it's about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, this has been a brilliantly played game up until these last couple of minutes. But uh, the people got their money's worth tonight, that's for sure. Great, great football tonight on PSJ High Bear homecoming night. Mark Bosca says to not talk while the ref is talking. Let Mr. Andy Scott give his indications right now. I'm not sure what they're trying to do. The clock is at 2.13. Mr. Scott, we have stuff to do on Friday night. He's just walking around looking at the field saying, man, this is a nice place to play football. <laughs> this is a beautiful stadium. Heck, I might come here to retire one day. And now he finally gives the indication to play ball three, third and 21, and Castaneda just takes it himself for a gain of nothing. And let's see if Westlaco finally takes its timeout. Timeout, Westlaco. Actually, the Bears take a timeout. Oh, no, Westlaco, my bad. Westlaco, excuse me. Westlaco took its final timeout. The Bears previously had two. They took it a couple of plays ago, but with all the penalties that nullified the other yeah. previous play. I'm not sure what the sequence was, but the Panthers burned their final timeout. They will have two minutes and 10 seconds to work with, trailing by 15, and this Bears secondary, which has been on fire. Jacob Barrera. 35, 36 yard line. We got the two minute warning right now. Two minutes remaining in the ball game. The Bears up 28 to 13. The Panthers need two scores and they'll be starting at the 34 yard line. The Panthers had a 95 to five rushing so now they're calling a penalty. Why are they calling a penalty? What's going on here? It's the end of regulation. Matt Kai and Memorial are going to overtime. They're saying he called a fair catch of some sort, but... Yeah, that should be a delay of game against Westlake, or that is the case. The last, the last three plays have taken 13 minutes. Yeah, this is... The Bears were at second and, I believe, <coughs> 19 at nine o'clock and right now it is 10.03 and we've had one play run, the punt, and now the, 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 the field, the ball. Not sure what Mr. Scott said, but we do know it's against Westlaco. So the Panthers go backwards on their return. Six fouls for 60 yards by Westlaco, but they have a lot of them on personal fouls. Rodriguez, pump fix, now pass is complete. Cavazos oh, fumbled oh. it, and the Bears recover it. Oh, huge hit. I'm not sure who hit the receiver, but my goodness. He jarred the ball loose, and that should do it all. I think the fat lady has sunk. And Cavazos got his bell rung. Wow. It Big was hit. Good hit by 
the Bears. We'll have to see exactly who it was, but man, oh man, that is a game clinching hit and fumble recovery. That was a bone jarring hit. He blew him up. Not sure if he got him in the head or, or what the case may be, but Cavazos was limping off the field gingerly. And here's a replay. Rodriguez with a toss to the outside. The pass is caught, and I'd say Santillan with the low hit. Is it Sanchez? It's between Sanchez yeah. and Guajardo. Yeah, what happened was Sanchez hit him high from behind, and then Guajardo finished him off, so he got sandwiched. Plus, he got hit by Santillan underneath, so a triple threat there on that hit, and we have another flag. We just can't seem to run out these final two minutes of the ball game. I actually have a movie to go to at 10 something. 150 left, and the officials do not want this game to end. I believe that was the third turnover for the Bears on the night. They had a, that's their second fumble recovery, and then you add an interception by Taylor Santillan, the Bears in victory formation, and we had not seen that here in, in, quite, some in time. quite some time. 28-13, Bears over Panthers. Next week we'll have PSG Memorial taking on Matt Kai on Thursday night. Kickoff at 7 o'clock on KTRI T17. We'll have the call as the district leading Bulldogs come into town to finish off their great season and PJ Southwest hosting the Veterans Memorial Patriots of Mission. They'll look to end the Patriots playoff run on Friday night. We'll have that live. Myself, Alex Pena, and Javier Martinez at 7.30 here on KTRIT 17. So join us as we finish the regular season. Hopefully the Bears with the win tonight, they'll have some momentum heading into next week's matchup against the McCallum Memorial Mustangs. The Bears finish off with 330 yards of total offense. West go with 249. So you see there the, the stat line that presented itself tonight. Big, big victory. Uh, biggest win of the year. Last week was a, sort of a playoff game for the Bears. They came through on the road beating San Benito tonight. Huge game against a West Echo team with only one loss in district, but the Bears prevail once again. They're going to live to see another day, and they're going to have a big showdown at McCown Memorial next week, fighting for their playoff lives. It's a final score here from PSJA Stadium. The PSJ High Bears take it to the West Echo Panthers by a score of 28-13. to 13. Their playoff hopes are still intact. They move to 4-3 and three in district. 31 5 a 6 and 3 overall and they'll end their season at home but next week it's a clash of titans the mustangs will find out the score there but the mustangs right now in overtime with mackay leading the charge offensively they'll travel to mccallan veterans Memorial stadium to play the mustangs that essentially is the playing game for the fourth and final playoff spot final score here from psj stadium the bears win it 28 13 uh, have a Friday have a great Friday night folks